Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I'm playing the still relatively new super ship, the Pan-Asian destroyer Kunming. This is the second of the videos I'm going to be posting about this ship. And I probably won't be doing any more, at least not for a while. It's a fun ship. I really like it. Uh, of course, I like the Yu Yang. So it's no surprise that uh, I also find this one to be fun. Uh, the first one that I posted up, the first replay that I posted up, I was really just kind of starting to get the hang of it. It was either the first or second game that I played using radar rather than smoke. And I was able to do, we'll call it 150,000 damage, thereabouts. And <laughs> one of the things about this ship, as you can see along the bottom, uh, uh, is that it has uh, a torpedo reload booster. Now it takes a long time to reload that darn thing, but when you use it, you can put 30 deep water torpedoes into the uh, into the water and <laughs> to devastating effect sometimes. 13 and a half kilometers range is pretty decent. And uh, at this point, with this video uh, in this game, I was I was I was feeling pretty comfortable in the ship. So while the last game. Well, it was a little bit of a blowout, and I did pretty decent damage. In this game, uh, I really felt like I contributed a lot more, and uh, I think this was just kind of, in general, a much better game. Rather than go through the stats and do all the things that I did in the last video, and if you want that, you can just, uh, you know, it's here on the ICOP site. You can just look at the, the video that was released just a few days before this one, and you'll, you'll find that video, and I'll, I go through in detail you know, things like the weapon systems, etc., to be able to give you some idea about the ship. <clears throat> now, this game does not start off all that well for the red team, as the Fletcher just basically pushes in until dead. You can see that he's <laughs> he's he's trying to smoke up now, but it's going to be too little, too late. And he's really not going to last too much longer. And I'm going to go ahead and push on into the cap. I fully expect to see some torpedoes. And you can see that there are aircraft here as well. So I'm going to try and stay reasonably well angled. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm looking at the targets that are behind me. As Fletcher decides to come back in again and try it. And the targets behind me, I'm just creating a little bit of room so that there's a lane that I am not in the middle of if the Fletcher throws his torpedoes out. For example, if you look at where the Fletcher was, and I shot Gary Irish in the Izumo. And where the Izumo is now, I'm slightly off of the center line of that. Now I'm just going to work on trying to secure the cap while I can. I don't have smoke. The radar is, to me at least, a lot more fun. And yes, I think that's true even if there are CVs in the game. Now I'll grant you, in this game, the FDR has not really been harassing me yet. You never know what might happen. Now the Fletcher was the only thing here, at least the only thing that I could see, so I'm pushing on up here to see whether or not I can get torpedoes on anything else. And it looks like Johan is moving away from me. Yamato is moving south behind the island. There's a Smolensk out there. And I use a speed boost to see whether I can catch anybody before they get around that corner. You can see the aircraft uh, from the FDR are heavily engaged over at the Charlie Cap. And there's really no reason for him to come over here now because we already have the Bravo Cap secured. Now here in a second I'm going to take a look and see what everybody's doing. I'm going to see what direction they're going, get some idea of their speed. So you can see there Yamato, he's moving pretty quickly. Johan moving pretty quickly. And what that's telling me is that if I launch the torpedoes now to make contact with Johan at his present speed, I'd have to launch him into the island. So there's no point. And I'm just sitting here waiting to see whether I'm going to get an opportunity to get some idea about what Smolensk is doing. Because that is almost certainly Smolensk smoke. You can see he's reversing. He's trying to save his ship. And I'm going to put some torpedoes out there. And when I look at where Ibuki is, he may decide to 
stick around. And now I've did, I'm just basically I'm deciding whether to stay close or move away. And what I opt to do here is to chase after the FDR. He's up here kind of by himself. I've got the Takahashi there behind me. Yep, that's right. You have nothing to worry about. You can just make your turn. And where I launched those torpedoes, they have every reason to suspect that those may have even been Takahashi torpedoes, as far as they know. So they may have no idea that I'm here. You can see I've landed another torpedo back there. Will I land anything on the Buki? Oh, hey, look at that. I caught the Smolensk. The Buki's turning in. And I've got the Roosevelt right in front of me. There's one on Yamato. So four torpedo hits. 38,000 damage and counting. And now I can harass the Roosevelt. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't have smoke, so I can't hide, and Takahashi has moved south. Flooding finishes off the Yamato, and that's kill number two. Six minutes in, two kills, 45,000 damage. Am I lighting the world on fire? No. Am I setting records? No. Am I playing a solid game? Yeah, I think I am. And Roosevelt knows he's detected now, so he's feeling some pressure. Which way does he go? Where am I? You know, if I were him, I'd probably suspect that uh, maybe I was being detected uh, from southeast of his position as Gary Irish gets kill number two, finishes off Carl the 14th Johan. And I put out a spread of torpedoes, and we'll just see what happens. Could I have used the torpedo reload booster there? Yes, absolutely, I could have. Would I have been able to sink the Roosevelt? I don't know. We'll, we'll never know. <laughs> but you'll see what happens here. I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep this Roosevelt within gun range, because if I land a couple of torpedoes, I may be able to finish him off with guns. I don't want him to get so far away that he's at my max gun range. Then it becomes very difficult to hit him, even though he's a big target. So I'm just playing a patient game. The bad guys are now down five ships. We're only down three. Our buffalo is in pretty bad shape. Our gearing is banged up. Looks like maybe I'm going to land two. Oh, maybe more than that. Three. I'm going to go ahead and go to work with the guns. Now, these are very floaty shells, but I've got help out here. You saw somebody else putting guns out here. Now I've got a turn to be able to get all my guns on Roosevelt, which means I'm probably not going to be able to keep all the guns on him because I've got an island coming up that's just off my starboard side, and I have to make sure I don't base plant into the island. Now, as far as he knows, I had that other set headed his way, and he's probably just worried about outrunning torpedoes. And since these torpedoes are not all that fast, he, he, he could. I should be pretty safe from enemy fire here. And I'm just going to stay on the Roosevelt until he's gone. And somebody beats me to the punch, which is fine. Now I've got a Wooster dead ahead. They're probably going to finish off Lambini in the Ohio. There's a Wooster and Montana, and Lambini's in big trouble. So I don't, I don't want to push out in toward the cap, get into open water, and then get radared by the Wooster. There's also the matter of there still being some aircraft, which you can see over there. And I think that's going to bode well for the red team, as our gearing is about to get sunk. Down it goes. And just like that, this is a much closer game. So uh, I want to play relatively conservatively here. We've got a little bit of a lead, but it's Engine not very big. It's 474 to 416. We had a cap lead, but right now we both teams have a cap. 
and Wooster goes down to a, a bomb from Immelman and our lead extends just a bit but this game's far from over Yamagiri's out there tracking our Immelman and you know as well as I do if that Yamagiri player is even remotely good our Immelman's probably in big trouble and I don't think my torpedoes are going to have time we're going to have to do this with guns and then we'll secure the cap and turn around I have to hope that my team can finish off Montana before Montana sinks Takahashi. He's coming around that corner right there. So I'm taking a little bit of secondary damage. Taking just a hair higher. Get into that juicy superstructure. There we go. Still having the torpedo reload booster I could use. And now it's it's four ships to two. But our Immelman is in really bad shape. And I think he's probably gonna get sunk by the Yamagiri as I look at this. And our Azumo just got sunk. I have to avoid these torpedoes. And Get back out there, because we're going to lose the Bravo cap. Torpedoes, direct front. There's not really any way for me to effectively help our Immelman. He's kind of on his own. With a range of 13 and a half kilometers, more or less. Uh, there's, there's nothing I have that's going to hit a Yamagiri at 20 kilometers out. My more immediate... Uh, worry is the Ibuki. Which direction is he going to go? And now the red team has two caps and we only have one. Takahashi is still in pretty good shape and Takahashi has two kills so I have to think he's maybe a pretty decent player as Butters pushes south to try and help finish up our Immelman with his Yam Yamagiri. And my assumption is that the Immelman is about to be sunk, which is going to make this a two ships to two ships game. The Yamagiri, while it is a little bit banged up, has that, uh, that rapid reload function, right? And with the help of that Ibuki, my nearly 20,000 HP, well, it wouldn't necessarily last all that long. You can see Yamagiri still has almost 13,000. And Immelman does, in fact, get burned down by the Yamagiri. So, I'll try and get some idea where he's heading. See if I can get out here and meet him. I want to stay far enough away from the Ibuki that even if he fires at me, it's a little bit harder for him to land the shells. Now, I'm thinking he may have turned to his starboard toward the west side of the map. And he may be focused on Takahashi, because even if he can't see Takahashi, he knows someone is in the cap right now, because it's flipping. We are down on points. I land one torpedo on Ibuki. I'm detected by Yamagiri, and I just expect any second for those guns. And there they are. I just have to weather the storm here, see if I can't mitigate that damage a bit. There's a nice shot from Yamagiri as I... Try to get as many shells on him as possible. He has smoked up. I'm still detected by his friend in the Ibuki, but I've got the radar, and he's close enough where I think, with any luck at all, I might be able to finish mine. It's going to be close. The radar does not last long. I've only got 15 more seconds. It's going to give me three volleys, right? And he's turning, trying to avoid taking all that damage, and I've just angled to avoid the Ibuki shells. And that's going to be the last volley I get off with the radar. This, is, this one's going to be... Oh, come on now. 
Okay, on a wing and a prayer, I just have to hope. Oh, that looks like it might catch him. <laughs> All right, so that's kill number three, as I said, 130,000 damage. Now, our Takahashi secured the Bravo cap, and we are back to about an 80, well, 78-point lead. At this point, I think the game is pretty securely in the bag. Takahashi's not going to put himself at risk. He's actually moving on the north side of the island that straddles uh, Foxtrot and Golf, uh, call it four and five. And I'm not sure what the Ibuki's comment was about there. Oh, I guess that Takahashi has smoke, right? Now I know Ibuki has to come back toward the cap. And here's where I'm going to make use of the reload booster. I'll put those out in case he comes this way. And I'll save this other set in case he moves to Bravo. Because I can cross here and get close enough to get the torpedoes out ahead of his attempt to get into Bravo. And as long as he stays on more or less that same line, this game is over. This is a really fun ship to play. If you like playing radar destroyers with a lot of torpedo possibility, then this might be right up your alley. This is a, it's a nice ship. It is pretty big target. You don't want to get caught out in this thing, but it's fun to play. Decent guns. If you like the U.S. or Pan-Asian destroyer line in general, I think you have a lot to like here. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a really fun game to play. If you did, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing or sharing a link to our webpage here on YouTube with your friends. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.